It's back, it's still weird, and I still like it. This is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version 2, an update to a road trainer I remember referring to as weird yet fun. I'm happy to report that the new version keeps a lot of what made the original fun and even improves upon the platform while maintaining its lightweight, springy goodness. The Rebel version 2 features a few more millimeters of fuel cell underfoot than the original, which isn't a bad thing and contributes to the shoe's soft and bouncy ride. The upper is a redesigned mesh doing away with the original's single booty-like upper, thank goodness, and features some traditional structural elements in the heel and across the midfoot that keep the shoe locked down. The shoe is built for short, fast, or race scenarios while now being a solid choice for long runs as well. It truly has become an all-day, everyday trainer, and I really like it. But do all of the updates equate to a better shoe? Is the shoe too squishy? Is the new design too bold? Too clown-like? We're going to dive in in today's review. Sit back, relax. Here we go. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. I'm excited about today's review because I like the shoe. I'm just going to get that right out of the way. Um, skip to the end if you want. But this is a shoe that uh, the first version I reviewed a couple of years ago. I'm excited to talk about the new version from New Balance. It is the Fuel Cell Rebel version two. Mmm, orange. I'm really liking this shoe. Uh, of course, it's not without its quirks, which I'll talk about in today's review. But before we even dive into the likes and dislikes, I have to point out with all my reviews that this was provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about the shoe. I'm not financially compensated for this review or saying anything. All the opinions are my own. You are the first to hear and or see them. Congratulations to you. Uh, so let's just dive in, shall we? As always, I like to talk about the things I like and dislike. Today is no different. Here are the things I like about the Fuel Cell Rebel version 2. Fuel Cell Foam. Uh, it's no secret that I've really been liking the Fuel Cell Foam. Every time that I've reviewed it in a New Balance shoe, I've talked about how great it is. I still think it's pretty damn good. It's squishy. It has some responsiveness to it, but uh, here we're getting a few more millimeters of it underfoot compared to the first version which is, in my opinion, a welcome addition. Uh, I don't mind that the shoe has more squish underfoot. I kind of wished the first version had that, so they delivered. Now, New Balance has been marketing the Fuel Cell as a really responsive midsole. I, I think it has squish and energy return. I just think it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't call it the most responsive midsole I've ever tried, not by a long shot. It's just squishy and soft and comfortable. And that's why I think this new version is gonna be really, really good for long runs, uh, I just did a double digit run in it the other day. That is why it is extremely dirty and muddy. The weather hasn't been great. Um, it's holding up great and it did really, really well on that long run. So this could be maybe a new marathon shoe for some people. All due to the fact that the fuel cell is a little bit thicker and still soft. I really like it. The upper. So the upper is completely redesigned. Um, I remember the original being a booty like upper and I kind of joked about that. It's all kind of one piece. We finally go back to a more traditional style upper with a tongue, uh, a nice mesh, very breathable, very light. It's not a super stretchy mesh, so it won't be as accommodating as the first version as far as a, a, like midfoot width and stuff like that is concerned. But it is a durable mesh and a very breathable and lightweight, almost semi-transparent mesh. So it works well in the shoe and it will work really well in the hotter summer months. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's good. Lockdown, really right here through the midfoot, by bringing in this new upper and going back to a more traditional tongue and lace system rather than a single layer of booty. I'm never gonna tire of just saying the word booty in my reviews. Uh, the first version just being a one piece upper was a bit problematic. So I couldn't get it solid lockdown, let alone keep it locked down through long runs. By keeping things simple and going back to a more traditional style of lacing system, I think you're gonna get a better midfoot fit with the additional uh, padding around the heel collar and this new heel counter that does a pretty good job of locking your heel in, overall, the shoe has a better lockdown. Uh, that is something that I welcome with open arms. Now that New Balance has sort of stepped away from that single booty upper, this is better. That being said, it's not all peach cobbler and root beer floats. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the new Rebel version two. Let's get to those now. Starting with stability. So we still run into the same issue here where the shoe is designed with a more uh, flarish lateral side. I believe that lateral flare is to uh, contribute to a more stable outside of your foot sort of ride. I never really felt like we got that. I don't know if this flare provides as much stability as the shoe feels like it needs. 
What ends up happening is, uh, at least in my case, the shoe and the medial post provide plenty of support and responsiveness through your medial fit. But as uh, you foot strike, I found it just began to collapse a bit on the lateral side of the shoe. Uh, it's something I've encountered in some other shoes here. It's the same sort of problem that carried over from the first version. The shoe wants to give a little bit more to the lateral side. So I found it a bit annoying, a bit of a problem. The more you run in it, the more you get used to it, but it could be problematic for some. Durability, specifically on the outsole, this endurance outsole that they use while being, you know, plenty grippy and really good on all sorts of road surfaces. It's not really durable. I'm getting a bit of wear right here through the midfoot uh, underneath the toe box, which is, you know, a problem to me. And that questions the durability of the shoe. Is it gonna be able to last a long time? The upper works well, the midsole holds up quite well. Uh, my experience with fuel cell, it, it does last a while. It's the endurance outsole. We'll see how long it lasts. I hope a while. And finally, the tongue. So now that we've moved to this more traditional style upper with a tongue, laces and all that good stuff, the tongue being very, very thin wants to slide all over the place. So it's just kind of an unfortunate thing that I've been noticing with a lot of tongues these days is that they just, they don't stay in the middle and they want to slide off to the side, one side or the other. Uh, a gusseted tongue could fix that issue, but we're also trying to save weight. The shoe is super lightweight, and uh, I don't know. I would like to see it gusseted, keep that stuff right in the middle. But for now, that tongue is going to go all over the place. Enjoy! Which is it for my dislike. So let's get to the breakdown here. Let's talk about build quality. As I mentioned, I think the new upper still really durable, still really breathable. I think the new welded overlays and the different lacing system is well utilized. I think the addition of a few millimeters of midsole will help this cushion last a little bit longer while still being really soft and comfortable for long runs. The problem is going to be the outsole. I think that's the one element in this build that will probably not last as long as the rest. Comfort. I really like it. I like fuel cell. I like the way this shoe fits. It does have a bit of a clown shoe shape, but that hasn't been bothersome to me. I haven't had like toe overlay or any major chafing issues. Uh, in all the runs that I've done with it, it has been a really comfortable shoe and I'm happy to see a little bit more fuel cell underfoot. So this can now be an all day, everyday trainer uh, with all sorts of distances in mind. Fit, it works with my foot. Uh, I think it fits quite well. I think the lacing, now you're able to get a bit of a better fit, more dialed in, more precision fit. I remember a lot of people saying that they had issues through the forefoot on the previous version. I don't think those issues will change. If you had issues in the first, you'll probably have issues here. They do make wide versions and stuff like that. So fit for me is fine. I think some people, it might take some getting used to. Price at $129, I think that's an okay price point. You are getting more cushion underfoot. Uh, you're going to get a lot of miles out of the shoe as far as cushion and comfort are concerned. I can't promise that the outsole will last a long time. But, you know, if you remember back to the early Kinvara days, those outsoles barely lasted uh, 100 miles, but the shoe lasted hundreds of miles. So we'll see if we can get that same sort of experience out of this. Making that $129 price point uh, fine. I'd like it to be maybe a little bit less than that, but you are getting a little bit more fuel cell. Um, so part of me thinks it's an okay price point. Smiles per mile per dollar, is that a thing? And finally, looks. I don't think this is the most attractive shoe. I think they are doing bold things with the Rebel version too. I think this color is bold. Some of the other colorways of this version, also bold. It still has a bowling shoe slash clown vibe to me. I don't know how they're gonna get away from that other than removing this sort of lateral flare and the longitudinal design and color blocking. <sighs> Beauty is always in the eye of the beholder. And in this case, it's, you know, I don't always look down when I'm wearing these shoes. That's sort of where I'm at with it. Bringing us to our conclusion. The Fuel Cell Rebel version two is a solid update to the original without adding too much weight and improving upon a shoe that I liked a lot, though I considered very weird. I think I referred to it as really great, but also really weird. Uh, Happy to say that that still carries over. The shoe is still really great. It's also still really weird. I honestly think it's the flair. The shoe will be great for short, fast, tempo style runs. It'll be good for road races. But now I think the shoe sort of falls into that all day trainer, long distance trainer, possible marathon shoe for some people. That's a good thing. I think this shoe now has a wider net and will uh, bring a lot more people into the happy space when running. People just looking for kind of an all-arounder. This, this is gonna do it. It's a delight to run in, and I think a lot of people will have a very similar experience. Which brings us into our final criteria. Is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel version 2 a buy, try, or a why? As you can probably tell by now, I'm gonna push this into the buy category. I think it's a solid shoe, I think it's a fun shoe, and I think it will work for a lot of different people. 
So that is where I'm gonna end this review. And now turn the question over to you. Have you run in the Fuel Cell Rebel or the Fuel Cell Rebel version two? If so, what do you think in the comments of this video? Let us know, let's get that dialogue going. If you have any questions about the shoe or you wanna get a pair of the shoe for yourself, uh, links in the description, they'll take you over to Running Warehouse. They're affiliate links, they cost you nothing, but they do help the channel out. So please, if you're getting any sort of running gear, whether it's shoes or tops or shorts or nutrition, use the link, it helps us out. And we appreciate it a lot. That is it for today's review. As you know, subscribe to the channel, follow us on all the social media networks and join the GR crew. We're doing daily live streams, daily discussions about running, training, gear, all that good stuff over at patreon.com slash the ginger We would love to have you join the crew. Uh, again, it is a really fun place with an amazing community, Discord server, book club, trivia nights. Like there's so much stuff happening with the GR crew that uh, I can't express to you enough how much we've just been loving it. So uh, we'd love to have you join us. That is it. We hope you're getting out there training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. -bye.